Hi everyone, my name is Emily DeSimone with the Garden State Film Festival and here with me is John Gray, who is the writer, director and producer of The Desecrated. John, how are you doing today? Hi Emily, I'm great, thanks for having me. Welcome back, yes, it's round two of interviewing. Um, so before I get into asking you about The Desecrated, which I was thrilled and spooked the whole time, can you tell our live viewers a bit about the film? Uh, well, it is basically uh, about a, a young woman who's working the night shift at the morgue, and she encounters an unwelcome guest. Okay. Yeah, I must say, like, I'm um, watching it myself. I almost felt like it was because, like, reading like your synopsis and everything on it, it, you had mentioned something about like maybe like using it as like a trailer for something in the future and it really really felt like I was like on the edge of my seat the whole time and like I was watching like a movie trailer for oh, a movie and it was it was really great to watch um so oh, you're welcome so um what was your inspiration for writing this well you know really this was exactly that it was it was meant to be a proof of concept for a feature film that um my wife uh is also my producing partner Melissa Peltier um we have been trying to raise money to make this horror movie this called the desecrated mm -hmm. and um my manager suggested to me you know why don't you make a you know seven minute or so proof of concept take a scene from it and make this you know movie so um uh i i decided to do that and so we we picked the scene from the script and uh we found a morgue which is another funny story in and of itself uh, a morgue set to shoot on and uh, yeah, we made the film, but uh, and my initial intention was really just for producers and financiers to see it. I had no thought about film festivals or anything like that at all. But we got such a great response from the movie um, that you know someone suggested to me that I, I entered into a film festival, and I hadn't done that in like 10, 15 years. Had a film at a film festival, so I did it, and you know won a prize and. Before you know it, it was getting accepted into a bunch of festivals. We were starting to travel to go to these festivals. And it's really what got me into making short films again, you know, like I did when I was a teenager. Um, so we had such a great experience with that, that from that moment on, we decided like every year we're going to try to make at least one short film, if not two. And of course, we've never gotten the feature film made yet, <laughs> but we're still trying. So, um since like you mentioned like it was a little story in itself i mean how did you find your your cast for this and i know you um have like a bit of a crew and a cast set up a bit already that you talked about with your other film and do you have like anything you want to talk about with like finding this morgue oh uh, well <laughs> it was really funny we we found um uh a a standing set that was a morgue set and in reality, it had actually been a morgue like back in the 50s and 60s and then had been decommissioned, as it were. And so the owners of it decided, like, like let's just try to see if we can rent it out to movie companies. Um, but so we, we rented it. It was a good price. And we shot there for two days. And it was in a very in industrial part of L.A. And uh, when we... We took a break, you know, for lunch, and we walked out into this little courtyard outside the the um, uh, set, and we noticed a building across the courtyard that said one eight hundred autopsy on the building, and it turned out that the people who owned the morgue set also had a business of doing private autopsies. So you know, if if your loved one dies in the hospital or something, and you're not really sure. You're not, you know, you're not taking the hospital's word for how they died or why they died. Or there's some mystery involved in the death. You hire these guys; they'll come and get the body of your loved one, and then they'll do an autopsy. And they were bringing bodies back and forth the whole time we were shooting there. It was just so weird. <laughs> and they had a big car. I wish I had a picture I could bring up really quickly because we took pictures of it. They had like a station wagon, almost like a hearse, and it had one eight hundred autopsy written on it, graffiti style. It's crazy. That's such a crazy story. I listened to you're saying like you know if you bring in and I listen to a little you know true crime and I've seen some Grey's Anatomy yeah. myself and right. now it's really a thing to hire for private autopsies. But no, like that's so that's so cool. Like the way that you found that that set. So um, yeah. how did you find your your cast and crew for this? 
Well, I, I call for the crew. I called on people I had worked with a lot. Um, there's a fantastic VP named Ross Berryman. Uh, he's Australian, and um, he was one of the DPs on Grimm, the NBC show Grimm. And I directed a few episodes of Grimm, and Ross and I became friends. And I, I would love Ross to shoot this movie if we ever get the actual movie made. So, you know, he he volunteered to shoot it for me, and then he brought some of his crew, and I had some people I had worked with in the past. Um, and then um, I have this fantastic team of casting directors, um, Debbie Manwiller and Russell Boast. And I work with them for many years. And so, you know, they um, they were able to, uh, you know, sort of put a breakdown out and just see who's willing to do. Because we, we don't pay the SAG minimum for these things is very, very small. And I think actors really only do them because they just love to work or it's an opportunity for them. Or, so, um, uh, you know, we actually had quite a few people vying for the for the roles. And you know, one of the roles, of course, is Dead Woman. You know, so that was a really difficult role to take on. And Marsha Moran is the actress who plays the corpse. And she's so wonderful. She's such a, just a wonderful person and and, uh, and a great sport, as you can tell. Uh, and, you know, no vanity because she just had to be there, you know, dead. And we made her look terrible. And, uh, and she was very good at being dead. You know, she was, she really could keep her eyes open for a long time. And, and I've studied a lot of, in, in preparation for this, you know, we studied a lot of, photos of actual dead people and in morgues and you know i had this whole notion about how the eyes were kind of like half masked mouth a little bit open and so we were you know we, we were trying all these things before we were shooting and she was so patient you know because okay no eyes just a little more closed just that's it right there you know mouth open a little more and up close it you know um and uh we actually had to do some cgi work um in the end because her carotid artery in her neck you know, just pulsed and you can't do anything about that <laughs> You know, Marsha, stop your heart, please, just for five seconds. So we ended up with CGI just taking that out. And mm -hmm. and th there were one or two moments, too, where, where her eyes just involuntarily flicked. And we fixed that with CGI as well. No, you're saying, like, she had to be patient. I'm like, well, it's going to have to be patient throughout this whole thing. Because, no, it was really great to watch. Um, so... You know, you said that you filmed this and then it got you back into film festivals. When did you film this short? We shot this in the summer of the, the spring of 2018. Um, and uh, you know, we shot it, I think, in May and we were finished with it in July. And um, and like I said, we just started, uh, you know, a couple of people suggested, hey, this, you know, this this works on its own. Um, never mind whether it's a proof of concept or not. It's just it's kind of its own little short movie. So you should you know, start to enter it, which I did. And uh, and that opened up this whole world. I think I spoke about this a little bit last time. Uh, uh, you know, my wife and I travel whenever we can, you know, to these festivals. And it's so great, you know, just to be with audiences who are passionate about movies and to meet other filmmakers and see all these other movies. You know, it's like an orgy of, of film, you know, for however many days the festivals are and we just love it um and so uh you know we're, we're off to sedona in a few weeks um uh for we have a few films playing there and um you know it's just it's just great i just I highly recommend that anybody who has a film uh entering into a film festival uh you know it's a great experience and i end up uh, with many of these festivals doing um seminars i, I do uh, a workshop on directing actors um you know i, I do workshops on production and post you know, pre-production uh, and so it's great to pass on whatever <laughs> meager knowledge I've <laughs> accumulated over the years. Uh, you know, it's great to have this opportunity to, to pass it on. And speaking of your meager knowledge, um, do you have any advice for other filmmakers? You know, the best advice I can give, particularly in the digital age we're in right now, is to make movies. There should be nothing stopping you from making movies. And like, you know, I always say, you've got basically a movie studio in your pocket, um, you know, cameras, lenses, post production, everything you can possibly want is in this camera, uh, in that phone. Uh, and so, you know, to me, that's like, got, I'm obviously, you know, ancient. And so when, uh, when I got started, of course, there was no digital anything. We were shooting on Super 8 or 16 millimeters. It was much more difficult I still did it, but it was much more difficult to get a movie done of any kind. 
But now it's incredibly easy. There's no excuse. So tell your story, you know, figure out what it is, have someone write a script for you or use somebody else's script, write your own script, but get out there and get a bunch of actors together and, and just, you know, go make a movie. That's the best possible thing you can do. Well, John, thank you so much for joining us again. Um, to everyone, The Desecrated will be playing at Asbury Lanes on Saturday, March 25th from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. That, during that block period. Thank you so much, John. Thanks, Emily. Have a great weekend. You too. Okay.